auction process really starts as soon as the, the season finishes, really. Um, whether that's the video reviews that our analyst team in, in Chennai will be doing, um, or just continuous data analysis of, of different players' performances around the world. Um, so these will be being tracked continuously by this analyst team. Um, and as we sort of go from June all the way towards September, um, player performances all around, the, all around the world are being reviewed. We're having sort of video footage of every single match that takes place. Any player that stands out is then sent through to Zubin or Maka. Um, those are then reviewed and then we'll go into a little bit more detail on them. Um, but prior to, to almost digging deep in the auction is retention, um, which is the first decision we've got to make, which is around October, November time. Um, and for that, again, we're reviewing all the opposition teams, who we think they might keep and release, how players are performing, how our own players are performing, and whether there will be sort of better options in the auction available. Um, this leads us to then having a, a camp sort of prior to the retention window, uh, which is a final look at the players, how they progressed over the previous six months. Um, and then we come together as a team, Maka and Zubin will, will review the overall squad structure and look where the gaps they want to fill and the areas they think they can strengthen in the auction. Um, and hence, we'll make our retention decisions based off of that. As we move from retention through to the auction, we then start having simulations. So we spend about a week in Chennai um, where eight of us will sit in a room. Each person researches their team. Um, and then we run full auction simulations for sort of four hours at a time to build um, price ranges for players. This then enables us to create a decision tree for the players we're looking to secure in the auction, obviously always with a plan A, B, C and D, um, which then hopefully enables us to successfully build the squad we want, the squad that Mac and Zoobs in particular want to fill all those gaps come the auction day. Yeah, I suppose um, building into an auction, um, you're mindful of what style of cricket um, that you want to play, what you want to see the, the Rajasthan Royals playing against different opposition, uh, on different surfaces. So we're trying to build depth within that squad, but having enough options there um, to create options at the selection table um, to play different styles of cricket. And that was one of our big focuses. Um, it was to uh, attain some extra spin to go with Shreyas Gokul. And you saw the trade um, of Mark Handy and Swadia uh, to Rajasthan to give us that option uh, on spinning surfaces to be able to play a different style of cricket and have some great backup there for Shreyas Gokul, who's been an outstanding performer. Uh, the other probably key focus for us was, was local Indian fast bowling and, and we feel as though within that, um, you know, if you look at the under-19s tournament that, that took place uh, post the auction, we had a couple of you know, great signings in, um, in, in Singh and Tiagi um, who come on board left arm and right arm quick um, who added to our bowling depth and also a trade of Rajput from, from the Kings eleven as well. So we were able to secure some of those gaps um, in trading which then took a little bit of stress off coming into the, into the auction process. Um, and as Jake said, there's a, there's a lot of uh, conversations that go on. There's a lot of da uh, data that's uh, analysed throughout that and a lot of footage um, and conversations with, with other coaches um, all around the world, depending on whether those players have been managed by those coaches at a certain time. So you're bringing all that information back into that central hub. Um, and, and then as, as Jake finally said, around the uncertainty um, that happens at the auction, sometimes you get spun off in different directions. And, and that certainly happened to us throughout the, the auction. It would happen to many other teams. So the ability to, to think quick on your feet is one thing during the auction, but the planning and preparation that takes place beforehand allows you to make really good decisions under high pressure, uh, which the auction is. Yeah, I think we've always, we've been known as the Moneyball team because since day one, um, we generally spent less than the other teams and still managed to create really highly competitive sides. And that was all from differentiating our auction strategy. So looking at different um, performance metrics for players and getting them to fill certain roles in the side. So you look at, you know, in baseball in the Oakland days, how they looked at specific stats that would help a first baseman or, or whatever. We would look for similar things that other teams might not have been tracking and hence we could find these undervalued players. This meant that in the history of the IPL, we've actually got the highest wins per dollar spent and the highest runs scored per dollar spent. So we have been very efficient. Now that we've got you know, the media rights deal that came in a couple of years ago and sort of the effective salary cap structure, it means we do have the capacity to spend our full salary purse, which again makes it a little bit tougher for the other teams to predict what we're going to do because we can spend big on, on any player we think is, is worth that spend in, in the auction. However, we do always try and be as efficient as possible, which is why we were very happy to again come out with, I think the second 
um, lower spend while hitting all of our all of our targets in this auction. We've got this thing called total cricket, better people, better cricketer, better royal. And that's something that underpins, I suppose, the staff that we put around our players, um, pushing the boundaries on innovations. Um, you know, as I said earlier, we, we believe that the game gets better every single day. So we're always challenging ourselves to get better, challenging the players to get better, challenging the whole organisation to get better and, and challenge yourself, challenge your competitors and challenge the norm. And that, that comes under sort of our banner as to what we um, feel is important to us as a franchise and on the back of that it's about putting a quality support team around the players um, to give them every possible opportunity to be able to perform and, and we feel as though with the staff that we do have um, and, and the people around that and the resources available um, that we've left no, no box unticked in, in that area. I'll probably take a step back to June, July in terms of that full process. Um, so, for example, on the sponsorship side of things, our conversations are starting now for, for next season. So, for example, our team are producing four sponsorship decks, again, personalised for every potential partner. We want to be building long-term partnerships which benefit our brand as, their brand as much as ours. Um, and, and you want to get to a place where, you know, brands are closely associated with each other, the likes of Standard Chartered and Liverpool. You want to build those deep partnerships with global brands um, that really sort of are, are well known in the industry. Um, we can add a huge amount of value to these brands with, I mean, the viewership alone is 800 million people, but also the creative content ideas we can, we can produce and really engage emotively with both our fans and their consumers. So that process starts in, in June and progresses through to a couple of months before the IPL. Obviously, we want to close all our, our partners and sponsors on the jersey well in advance to, to purely get the, the kit ready is one point but also so we can start activating them. So brands that close in September, October, we can activate all the way through those five, six months before the season, which is a massive advantage to, to those. And hence why it's important to, to have multi-year sponsorship deals, um, which are extremely beneficial. Um, we've got some superb partners with, with the likes of Expo, um, Red Bull, Geo, um, KEI. And, and these guys, we hope, will be with us for, for many years to come so that we can really build those deep partnerships and, and really understand each other's brands. Um, otherwise, our digital team are continuously engaging with fans year round. Um, this lockdown has probably made them even busier than, than the season time. Um, they've created some amazing stuff. The, the podcast you'll see with the likes of Sanju yesterday, Stoke, Steve Smith. So the insights we're trying to give our fans, we're trying to bring them as close to the action as possible and also show potential partners um, the sort of amazing reach that we can give them even during this lockdown. I think it's it's quite an exciting time for, for certain brands who can use the sort of assets we have in terms of the players to, to engage with their fans. Um, and so we're looking to support any of our current and, and future partners to do so. And, and the final piece of that is the sort of grassroots and academy area. Um, we've got an academy in, in Nagpur, which is a fantastic facility and one in which we're looking to get more and more um, counties and states from all around the world to come and visit and train and develop because as we all know Indian conditions are very different to, to anywhere else and so having the that facility is really really attractive um, we've got an academy in the UK and we've got grassroots programs for the boys and the girls as well um, we're looking to launch a lot more um, innovative features and, and platforms in this area and again really investing deeply in um, grassroots cricket in India because that's really of core importance to us. Um, so there's a huge amount that goes on. Um, it's, <laughs> all, the, um, all the team who are on this webinar will know how, how hard uh, an IPL season is, um, but it's so rewarding um, and you build sort of amazing relationships with, within your team. Um, you come through sort of amazing, sort of ridiculous challenges. Um, but I feel any individual as part of a management team during an IPL will learn more in the two months of an IPL in a couple of years in a normal job. You know, as a business, we have a three-year plan. Um, however, with any business, you've got to stay fluid and flexible in the current time. Um, so every every year, we'll review our plan for the next three years um, and update and adjust. And so this year, obviously, with, with the COVID-19 situation, um, we've had to do that rather more quickly, um, but we have Again, we see ourselves as a startup organization. We've got 20 to 25 full-time employees. We've got to be able to be agile. 
they've got to be able to take advantage of, of opportunities that are, have arisen and also um, support to our foundation. Um, we've recently done a, and she is still on, we've got a, a social fundraising page on Facebook, um, raising money for, for destitute women in Rajasthan. Um, and I think we've raised 61% of the target in the first three or four days. Um, on the other side, as I said, we've got to innovate. We've got to find new solutions for our partners. There are certain companies who are going to be um, successful coming out of this situation, whether it's in, in tech or, or other industries. Um, and hence, how can we target and benefit these guys and use, again, our players and our brands um, to help them market to consumers and grow? Uh, from a management perspective, um, going forward, as Jake said, we the, the rules and regulations stipulate a three-year cycle. So what does that look like for us going forward? There'll be continual discussions within the tournament as to what the squad is going to look like in the following year, what retention may look like. So there's no doubt there'll be some checkpoints around tapping in and, and looking forward to the future. Um, but, but in tournament, it, it'll be literally moving game to game as a coach and with the players. Um, there'll be a little bit more strategy about who we use and, and when on different surfaces and, and managing the player load throughout the season as well. Um, so that's probably not a discussion for the players, as I said, because they'll be in the here and now. But, um, you know, we've invested heavily in some young talent um, at this year's, this year's option. And, and it really is about, you know, how much we expose them. Um, you know, are they a part of the retention? Uh, are they a part of the right to matches? Um, you know, along with the senior players that we already have there. So they're the moving parts that will confront us at, at the back end. Um, and as I said, in, this, in the first and second year of the cycle, you're going to retain a lot more. We're going to have uh, restrictions on how many we can retain. So as far as the future goes for that whole list of 25 players, um, the realistic part of it is that we can probably only guarantee, you know, maybe five or six, depending on the rules and regulations. Uh, that would be a part of Rajasthan going forward for the following year. So, so that's always uh, a hard part of building a, a list and a team is you're at the mercy of that every three-year cycle.